All right, good morning, everybody. We are just expanding upon a previously learned concept. Welcome to lesson 106, comparing and ordering decimal numbers now through the 10,000s, please. So just a quick little review if you are still fuzzy about place value. This shows up on page 697 of your book. Everything to the left of the decimal point are the whole numbers. And remember, the first group we call the no-name group, the hundreds, tens, and ones, because you just say the name of the number. You don't have to say a name of a group. You have the decimal point you pronounce and when there's a whole number in front. If you just have a zero, you don't say zero and the decimal number. You just pronounce the decimal number. And then we had the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place, and one new place value, the ten thousandths place now. So let's jump right into it right now. Here they're asking us to use words to name. So first of all, I'm going to name my whole number, right? I have a one and a two in the no name section. So what am I going to call that? Just 12, right? So now we have to go and name the decimal point, and I'm going to say what? 12 and. And lastly, let's take a look at our decimal number. We have 0, 6, 2, 5. So name the number. That would be 625, and he's four places past the decimal point. So 625 ten thousands and it's about that easy right let's try another one all right we're gonna do it again remember start off name and the whole number I have one zero one in the no name section that's one hundred one right gonna go ahead and name the decimal point and I'm just gonna have to go and say and lastly I'm gonna name the number name the group the name of the number, I have a 5 and a 3, so that's 53. Again, he's 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right of the decimal point. So again, 53 ten thousandths. For the grand total of 101 and 53 ten thousandths. And our last one here, if I just have a 0, in my whole number place, I don't want to say zero and. Let's just go ahead and just take a look at the decimal number. We don't have to say zero and. So I have 18. 18 ten thousandths is all I would have to write using words. And it's about that easy. Name the number, name the group. So let's check out this one because I still have some people kind of struggling and we learned it last week. When you're rounding decimal numbers, look at the digit in the tenths place. The first one to the right of the decimal point. And you basically have two choices. Either leave the number alone or round up to the nearest biggest number. So I could either choose to call this 99 or I could round it up to 100. And we look at the digit in the tenths place. If it's five or more in the tenths place, round the whole number up one. If it's less than five, keep the whole number as he is. So this is five, so am I going to keep him as 99? Am I going to round them up to 100? If it's five or more, we're rounding up. So we're going to round this guy up and call him 100. Same thing down over here. I have two choices for an answer. I could call this 103, or I possibly could round up to 104. It's all up to the digit in the tenths place. The digit in the tenths place I have this time is a 3. And so that's less than 5. So I'm going to keep the whole number as he is. I'm just going to keep this rounded down as 103. Okay, time to go and compare some decimal numbers. 
Remember, first compare whole numbers. Here I have the whole number 4, and here I have the whole number 4. So it's a tie so far. Then you compare each individual decimal number. You don't look over here and say 4,054 is way bigger than 5. You have a 5 in the tenths place. You have a 4 in the tenths place. 5 is greater than 4. So 4 and 5 tenths is greater than 4 and 4,054 ten thousandths. Let's try it again. Compare the whole numbers. Here I have 6. Here I have 6. Go and look at each individual decimal place. Here I have 1 in the tenths place. Here I have 1 in the tenths place. Here I have nothing else. Here I have a bunch of zeros. Zero is the same as nothing. So 6 and 1 tenth equals 6 and 1,000 ten thousands. Here we have to go and write 1,457 ten thousands as a fraction. So just use the digits for the numerator, 1,457, and the name of it, it was in the ten thousands group. That's going to be your denominator. That's probably the biggest fraction we have written all year long, right? 1,457 ten thousandths. And then it says, use words to name both numbers. So I don't have to say zero and, I can just start with the name of the number and I end up with 1,457 ten thousandths. All right, arrange these in order from least to greatest, from the smallest to the biggest. Remember, first compare the whole numbers on the left side of the decimal point, and then we're going to compare each individual decimal. So I have two tenths, one tenth, one thousand thirty-five ten thousandths, and sixteen hundredths. So right now I have a zero in each of the whole number places. So let's go and look on at what would be the smallest. Here I have two in the tenths place, one in the tenths place, one in the tenths place, and one in the tenths place. Let's go and move on to the hundreds. Here I have nothing in the hundreds zero in the hundreds, and six in the hundreds. So it's got to be starting off between these two numbers. Let's go and take a look. Nothing in the thousands. This has three in the thousands. So I found my first smallest number is going to be one-tenth. My next smallest number is going to be one thousand. 35 ten thousandths. And this one was pretty easy. Here we had two in the tenths place and one in the tenths place. So my next smallest number is going to be 16 hundredths. Finally, my greatest number, two tenths. And that, my friends, is the end. Maybe you don't need a piece of scratch paper for the Socrative quiz, but if you're fuzzy on place value, you want to be looking on page 697 of your book, and good luck.